there is a taste in here that you cannot find in other vegetables. And the more you eat, the more it's become tasty and you keep on, you know, asking for it. What this farmer in Hawaii is talking about is not a vegetable, it's a tree. And while Vicky Domingo says it has an unusual flavor, there's more to this tree than meets the taste buds. You keep on eating and eating and you can feel your body is more energetic, more healthy, and y you can see the difference. You're not dropping, you know, you keep on, you know, just so active. You have to remove one by one like this. Domingo says she has grown this tree on her farm for more than 25 years. She harvests moringa twice a week, all year round. Every week, Domingo sends a thousand pounds of moringa to the mainland. The rest of it ends up here at a Honolulu farmer's market, where most of her customers have eaten it their entire lives. Well, in the Philippines, it's a third country. In other words, it's not a rich country. We cannot afford to go to the doctor for medicinal purposes. So we use this in our daily lives so we can have more energy, more vitamins to supplement our daily nutrition in our body. The tree is called moringa, or as the Filipinos call it, marungay. An awful lot of cultures have one or more plants that are kind of markers that, that people think of themselves when they think of that plant. Dr. Will McClatchy is an ethnobotanist at the University of Hawaii. He studies the ways that humans interact with plants. If you drive around Honolulu here, you'll see a lot of houses have at least one modern guy in the yard, maybe a little forest of them, and that's a pretty good indicator that there's a Filipino family there. Jokingly, we say it, our Filipino banner, which is our Filipino flag. Once you see this, that means all Filipino stays there. Domingo says there are many nutritional and medicinal uses for moringa. All parts of the tree are usable, from the roots to the stem, to the leaves, to the flowers, and to the pod. They, the roots, you can use that as a tea. And then the trunk, you can scrape it, squeeze it, get the juice, put in your cut skin, and your skin will heal. Some of this may be folktale, but some cultures have used moringa as a medicinal plant for thousands of years. McClatchy says Moringa is worthy of its reputation as a tree with unusual nutritional properties. Thank you. Moringa is one of these trees that is a, a multi-purpose plant that fulfills such a high percentage of kind of basic needs that uh, when people get used to using it, uh, they really can't see what it's like to live without it. And many cultures don't. Today, Moringa is used as a remedy, and in essence, a multivitamin in many of the world's warmest regions. Moringa is used widely in Africa and South Asia, and it's been introduced into South America and Central America, where it's also being used. So, you know, this is not just a plant of a single community. We were just talking this morning with uh, one of the owners of this plantation, and he was saying, just telling me how he, the last time he was here, he had a, a handful of moringa leaves and that he worked all morning on it and felt great. Dr. Mark Olson is a botanist and a leading expert on moringa. He teaches at Instituto de Biología Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México in Mexico City. Here he is visiting a new moringa farm about two hours outside the city limits. So they've just planted these here and soon they'll be nice and big. Olson says that while moringa can grow in places like Mexico or Hawaii, the tree is native to arid, subtropical regions, places like Africa and southern India, hot places where Moringa has proven its persistence. And this is a plant that really does uh, do extraordinarily well in, in, in some of the most difficult areas, in areas that are very hot, areas that are very dry, areas where, where other things are very difficult to cultivate. Look at the little tuber there. There's, this is one of the reasons it, it survives so well in dry areas. Also, they're storing lots of water in the wood. Uh, so that, that's one of the reasons this is such a remarkable tree. They, they don't have particularly deep roots. That's sort of a myth about moringas, that they survive because they have deep roots. No, they're, they're storing water in their roots and their trunk. But moringa, says Olsen, does a lot more than just survive, despite the tree's sometimes scraggly appearance. 
I don't think they're actually the most attractive tree. They're more a tree that, that you look at and you sort of love the way you love a, a scruffy friend or a scruffy dog uh, because the, the branches sort of splay here and there and they get burdened down with huge quantities of fruits on them. And uh, that's actually what makes the tree so remarkable is that it's such a generous tree. And that's because people have found multiple uses for so much of the tree, including its seeds. They're full of oil. You press the seeds, and then this wonderful aromatic oil comes oozing out, uh, which you can use for cooking, you can use for cosmetics or lubrication or whatever. Uh, and the cake, the press cake, the, the, the stuff that's left over after pressing the seed, that is what's used for water purification. Water purification, Olson says, is especially useful in developing countries where clean water is hard to come by, but the benefits don't stop there. Some of the things I think are most exciting about Moringa is, for example, the high vitamin content. There's a lot of vitamin A in the leaves. Uh, and uh, worldwide, that's a problem. Uh, a lot of people uh, have problems in development of their eyes because they don't have enough vitamin A. Moringa's vitamin A content, and its content of vitamins in general, has caught the attention of scientists around the world. So I started to read about Moringa and I was absolutely amazed about the richness, richness in nutrients, in many antioxidant compounds, in vitamins. Dr. Monica Marcou is a pharmacologist who has studied many plants. She has done extensive research on Moringa and says it has significant nutritional potency. This subject is one of the topics of her recently published book, Miracle Tree. To me, it was just a natural um, pathway from my scientific background and my love for trees to writing this exciting book on one of the most exciting and extraordinary trees of our world. Marcou spends much of her time looking at trees and plants, both as a pharmacologist and as an artist. While Marcou, the nature photographer, is grabbing shots of plants, Marcou, the pharmacologist, says she has a bigger concern. We are having an epidemic of cancer and cardiovascular diseases and many other chronic diseases. Um, it, it's just, it's because we basically do not eat what, what we are supposed to eat. Most of the plants are famous for a particular type of nutrient, like for instance, um, the orange or the lemon um, is famous for a high content of vitamin C. The spinach, for instance, on the other hand, is famous for its iron content. Moringa is very unusual because this single plant contains a wide variety of nutrients, but also in quite very high amounts. Marcou says this concentration of nutrients combined with low calories and low sodium content makes Moringa an ideal energy food or supplement that can help offset the typically unhealthy Western diet. Many of the Westerners are also deficient in antioxidant and anti-aging substances that are mostly found in plants. Antioxidants, according to the National Institutes of Health, protect the body's cells and may prevent cancer. And Marcou says Moringa is a treasure trove of antioxidants that happen to work hand in hand. Antioxidant substances and antioxidant vitamins work together in the body. For instance, it's known that selenium works better in the presence of vitamin E. Moringa has high amounts of selenium and has also vitamin E. While many plants contain antioxidants, Dr. McClatchy says that Moringa is also high in the nutrients we usually associate with meat. Moringa is well known for being a, a good source of leafy green vegetable protein. And uh, you, you don't get a lot of protein out of uh, many vegetable foods other than like beans and things like that. So uh, getting it out of the leaves is really a big deal. And while there are a few other plants like soy that are protein rich, Olson says Moringa is special. I have a lot of food allergies. I'm allergic to wheat, I'm allergic to eggs. Soy tends to be a fairly highly allergenic food. It causes allergies easily in many people. Uh, we think that this is because of the, the form that some of the, the proteins are in in soy. Uh, they're apparently in a form that's very simple and fairly easy for the body to assimilate in Moringa. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, Moringa contains 18 of the 20 amino acids, building blocks of proteins that are found in the human body. And says Marco, Moringa is one of the few plants that contains all of the essential amino acids. Moringa contains all the nine essential amino acids that actually we cannot produce. 
um, their presence but also their ratio is very beneficial and um, it is estimated that this ratio is very good for absorption and for being bioavailable to our bodies. Further research is needed to establish the bioavailability of all of Moringa's nutrients. But in some places, scientific studies may be too long a pursuit and take a back seat to a harsh reality. In most of Sub-Saharan Africa, any baby has a 20% chance of dying before he reaches the age of five. In some countries, up to 40%. And even those who survive past the age of five, up to half or more, will suffer from malnourished physical and mental development. These are lesions caused by malnutrition around the neck and around the waist. They are dry now, but will become permanent scars. As the former regional representative for Church World Service in Senegal for 16 years, it was Lowell Fugley's mission to help local clinics develop ways to save children at risk to malnutrition. Having been born myself into a middle-class American family, I thought it was just by chance that I was born in these conditions and not in the condition of a poor African family in the bush of Africa and living a malnourished life. And so I have a certain obligation to share what I received. In his quest to combat malnutrition, Fugley came across Moringa in the late 1990s. It contains more vitamins and minerals in various combinations than you find in any other possible vegetable. And I thought to myself, if this source of nutrition could be made available at the village level, then this could be a very effective tool in preventing malnutrition. What Fugli says he didn't know at the time was that the Senegalese people were already familiar with Moringa. It was only uh, through a Peace Corps volunteer working in forestry who told me that, oh, Moringa is already growing in Senegal. Not only was it growing, the people had been using it for generations, only they didn't refer to it as Moringa. They called it Nebedai, which Fugli suspects comes from the English words, never die after the tree's resilience. I ask any Senegalese, do you know the Nebadai tree? Oh yes, my mother makes a sauce from this leaves of this tree, we call it a boom. Every Senegalese knew this tree. The problem, says Fugli, was that it was prepared and used in ways that diminished Moringa's nutritive contents. They boil the leaves too long, they throw out the water that is boiled in and where the many of the vitamins are located and so they lose a lot of the benefits that the leaves could provide. So Fugli went to work, both planting Moringa trees and more importantly, educating healthcare workers on how Moringa can help stave off malnutrition. I was trained in 1998, and right away we saw the virtues of using Moringa because of its very high nutritional value. So we began using it right away on an experimental basis. Healthcare workers learned to grow their own moringa trees, dry the leaves, and pound them into powder, maintaining all the nutrients. Nursing mothers were taught to add a spoonful of moringa to their food morning, day, and night to increase their milk production. They were also told to add moringa to all of their family's meals. When we introduced this tree in Senegal, or uses of the tree and different ways of using it, the reactions of the people there was that, well, this is our tree. You know, you're just adding on what we know already. As people changed their habits, Fugli says the results were clear, especially among children. They look happier, they have more energy, they'll smile. Uh, when they came to the clinic, limp, eyes drooping, no energy, and within three weeks, see them bigger, healthier, and smiling. We observed that it was much, much more effective than the classic system we had been using, which was based on imported and costly products, such as milk powder, sugar, and vegetable oil. With Moringa, people can go into town and find it themselves. Moringa is still being used, it's still being promoted, it's still being very valued even without our input from the outside. Moringa, it doesn't die, it can continue on its own. So you have to eat the Moringa in a daily basis. 
and they, all their grandkids are eating it every now and then. Even my own children, and they are already professionals, and yet they come home and eat it. And while moringa is mostly considered an ethnic food, the trend, says McClatchy, is that more nutritious plants, like moringa, are finding their way into the mainstream. Our diets are pretty bad, although they are improving. Um, but one of the reasons they're improving is because we're starting to adopt more and more of these kinds of plants. I've been in villages where the only trees that survive and grow well are Moringa oleifera, uh, which is really amazing when you consider how many useful things the tree provides. Moringa has, it comes very close to being a perfect source of nutrients in terms of variety and concentration. So that is, I think, very unique about this Moringa tree.